Hey friends, this is a painting I've painted over 10 years ago. And today we're gonna find out how far I've come, because I'm gonna paint it again. Same painting, same size, almost same exact materials, only hundreds of paintings and thousands of hours of practice and experience later. And of course, a completely different person painting the painting. But we'll get to what that exactly means in just a bit. I have to confess, at the time of recording this, I have absolutely no idea how this little experiment is going to turn out. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm equally curious and kinda concerned. Because the thing is, I don't really think the original is a bad painting. Sure, it's technically not particularly well executed or impressive, but overall I think it's a nice painting. The colors and the separate elements of the painting complement each other quite nicely and I think it kinda works. When I painted the original now, over a decade ago, I already had some grasp on the basic principles of painting and at least some confidence in my abilities. So the final comparison might not be different like night and day. I kinda have a feeling that what I'll paint here won't look any better or worse, but just different. But the fact that I'm not repainting a childhood drawing here, but something from close to the beginning of my career, I think makes this whole comparison even more interesting. I mean, I can obviously paint better than my childhood self. But this here will give an interesting insight into where exactly all the years and years of practice went. And how all that translates into a finished piece of art. At least I hope so. But I guess we're gonna find out. By the way, if you're curious and you really wanna see every brush stroke from start to finish, you can now check out an unnarrated long version of the process for this painting over at Patreon. So what's the game plan here? What's the process? How am I gonna do things differently this time? Well, I'll use a classic two-step process. Step one, caffeinate. Step two, paint. There's really no need to overthink this here. I'll probably approach most aspects of the painting differently anyway, so I don't have to be intentional about trying to do anything different here. The plan is to put down some paint and then see where it takes me. And throughout the process, I will take a step back and decide where to go next. Over the years, the way I paint has changed quite drastically. Not only on a technical level, but also my entire approach to painting. Back in the day, I hardly thought about anything other than technique and skill. According to the motto, the more realistic the better. But what can I say? Things have changed. Time is a powerful force. You hate classical music or broccoli and it's impossible to imagine feeling differently about it or you cannot imagine ever wanting to do anything else than painting faces or draw on an iPad? Well, you'd be surprised. If you ask a group of 20 year olds about their likes and dislikes, their hobbies, favorite music, favorite food, etc. and you ask them, do you think this will change over the next 10 years? They will tend to think the music they listen to now is the music they will listen to in 10 years. The friend they have now will be the best friend they have in 10 years, etc. But guess what happens when you ask a group of 30 year olds the same question, retrospectively. Have these things changed over the past 10 years? And they will all tell you, of course they have. All of that's changed. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It's very easy to remember who we were 10 years ago, but it's hard to imagine who we're going to be and what we're going to like in the future. I thought all I needed to be happy and satisfied as an artist was to become a better craftsman. But guess what? Once I became a better craftsman, even more skillful than I imagined, I felt kinda empty. And what I was doing felt kinda pointless. Not necessarily because it wasn't good, but because I completely overestimated how happy those things would really make me. And I didn't consider how much I would change over time. By the time I finally became the great craftsman I always wanted to be, I was no longer the person who wanted those things in the first place. Kinda ironic, I know. At every moment in our lives, we make decisions that have a profound impact on the future person we become. But when we then finally become those people, we're not always as thrilled as we thought we are going to be. Back then, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I also mostly focus on technical skills, as most beginners do. But today it's more about mood, flow, design, calligraphy, etc. And intention. But if you would have said that to me 10 years ago, I would have asked you what the hell you are talking about. But hey, who knows how I will look back at what I'm doing right now in 10 years time. I'll probably shake my head just to say. 
But yeah, before I now hand this video over to my future self and we get to the most exciting part of the whole video, the final comparison, I want to quickly thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a great online learning community where people like you and I can get creative and learn new skills. Drawing, writing, making videos, you name it. You get to explore thousands of classes with super interesting topics. And one of the greatest things, I think, is that you can find some simple introductions to complex topics. Like good old jazzers, mastering illustration, sketching, inking and color essentials course. Maybe watching it will jumpstart some ideas and get you inspired to create something on your own. He has a way of doing that to people. And at just $10 a month for an unlimited premium membership, Skillshare doesn't break the bank. And since they are sponsoring this video, the first 1000 who click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So I encourage you guys to make use of that. Well friends, future Alpa here, what a blast from the past. While you watch me put on the final touches and finish this painting off, let me tell you something. I did not see this coming. Honestly, I thought that my new version would be painted a bit better. I mean, it's been over 10 years and maybe look a bit more sophisticated. But I have to say, it is a difference between night and day. It's really interesting to see where all the years of dedication and practice and frustration have gone. I hope you guys can see that I wasn't born the painter I am today. I was mildly talented at best. When I started my journey as an artist, most of what other artists did seemed like a complete mystery to me. As it's the case for anyone who picks up a new skill for the first time. But everyone starts somewhere. And over the years, things slowly made more and more sense, like learning a language. First everything is gibberish, and over time you understand more and more until you're able to write and read and communicate. Now, I'm sure there will be some people out there who like the first original version of the painting better. And some people who won't see a big difference between the two at all. And that's fine. Art is subjective and you're, of course, entitled to your wrong opinion. But if you look at both paintings next to each other, I think it's pretty clear how big the gap between the two really is. I mean, look at this. One has more depth than the other. Better color harmony. More contrast and variety. More confidence in each brushstroke. More mystery yet more clarity and so on and so on. I think it's quite striking how vast the difference between the two actually really is. One of the paintings has what the other only pretends to have. Now, I will say this. If the degree of realism was the only thing you paid attention to, I could see how one might feel that these two aren't exactly worlds apart from each other. But that is not something that I'm interested in. Nor is it something that would have been possible with the reference that I used anyway. But you know what? The most mind-blowing difference between the two is something you can't even see. The true power of experience, because this one took me a few days to paint, while this one took me a few hours. The only thing that could have made this whole experiment even better is if I also did a proper updated version of this motif. While the composition is okay, there's a lot of room for improvement. I also would have painted the painting at a different size if it wasn't for the comparison. And on a different painting surface and with better lighting. The reference for this, I'm pretty sure, is a stock photo or something from DeviantArt. Anyone remember those glory days? If I took the reference now myself, I feel like I could make a much, much better version of this painting that's truly mind-blowing. But maybe I should do that in a future video. Let me know if you would like to see an updated version 3.0. Friends, this was a ton of fun and then some. If you made it this far into the video, be sure to click that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to support the channel more directly and make sure that there's always enough coffee around to keep me running, consider becoming a patron of the channel. Or head over to my shop and grab yourself a print. And with that being said, friends, we are gonna bring this video to an end. Special thanks to all these beautiful people here for making all of this possible and Thank you all out there for watching, guys. Please hit like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and yeah, have a good one.